During some months of the year, there won't be one full moon, there will be two. And on some occasions, they will be supermoons at that. For instance, this summer happened to have two supermoons within a month, so I really wanted to photograph the full moon with the New York City skyline at least once this year. My name is Aaron Donahue, and I'm a New York City-based photographer and content creator. Photographing the moonrise in the summer is my favorite time to do so because it's warm out and I like to have color in the sky from the sunset with the moon. It feels like there's always a supermoon, a blood moon, or a wolf moon every couple of months. So what constitutes a supermoon? Well, according to NASA, it's when the moon is full during the closest point in its orbit around Earth. What the hell does that mean? To put it simply, the moon will seem extra big and bright. There are a bunch of places around New York City that you can capture the moon, but if you want to capture it with the skyline, you should go across the Hudson River to New Jersey and be along the waterfront. There are a variety of ways to get to the New Jersey side. There's driving, if you have a car, or public transportation via a bus at Port Authority. Or, my favorite way is actually by the ferry. There's only one company that ferries between NYC and New Jersey. You may have seen NYC Ferry, but that's only among NYC stops. Going over the Hudson is with NY Waterway. Taking the ferry in the summer is so nice. It's a simple experience, but memorable. Also, depending on weather conditions, you can witness a beautiful sunset while crossing the river. From the New Jersey side, there are a bunch of spots you can take pictures of the moon with the skyline, like from Weehawken and Liberty State Park in Jersey City. However, if you want precise and planned shots, that will take some preparation. Using planning apps like Photopills or Planet, you can map out what building you want your composition to be made up of. These kinds of apps are the key to nailing the shot with the moon, the sun, and astrophotography with the Milky Way. The main con to me about these is that they are pretty technical, but like all things technology, it's about getting used to the user interface with practice. If you have a really long lens and want that massive moon compression shot, a photographer's haven is out at the Eagle Rock Reservation in West Orange. You will need a car to get there. I've been there a few times, but it's such a journey and the payoff isn't worth it in my opinion, because you really need optimal conditions for a perfect moonshot. Otherwise, the air really messes with the horizon and the moon ends up looking distorted. If you don't want to trek over to New Jersey, you can also get the moon from the NYC side, like from Queens or Brooklyn, but you usually have to wait until later in the night. I've taken pictures of the moonrise from Gantry Street Plaza, one of my go-to spots in Long Island City, but I'm not a fan when the sky is pitch black. During this time of year, expect to be surrounded by other photographers. A lot of NYC photographers participate in this, so if you ever see a horde of people with their cameras, it's probably to photograph the moon. As for camera gear, a telephoto lens is recommended since you're shooting from a relatively far location and want compression in the shot. The minimum should be 200 millimeters. I was using the Sony 70 to 350 millimeters, which is an APS-C lens, and the 35 millimeter equivalent is 525 millimeters when fully zoomed. Depending on the time of night, you may or may not want to use a tripod. Since it's usually pretty dark, I would recommend using one. Also, you can set up a time lapse to capture the moon's movement across the sky. If you're a Sony user, there's an interval shooting feature. I use this all the time so that I don't have to bring a separate remote. Set the interval between 1 to 3 seconds, or 5 seconds at the very max, because the moon moves so quickly during the rise. One second is perfectly aligned, and the next it's moved on. <laughs> For settings, the aperture should preferably be as close to f8 as possible, but you can go down to f5.6. You want a relatively wide depth of field in order to keep most of your shot in focus. Shutter speed is a variable that you can experiment with. I typically stay around 1 over 200, but have done 1 over 100 and even as low as 1 over 20 without motion blur. While preferably closer to 100, I've been pushing ISO higher because I really need the light. And on my most recent shoot of the supermoon, I went up to 1000. Sony is known for its low light capabilities, and at 1000 there wasn't that much noticeable noise. All in all, photographing a supermoon or regular full moon is more so about the journey. Prepare properly and you can get some beautiful shots, especially with the New York City skyline. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe and see you in the next video.